Good morning, YouTube. Today we are introducing our first playlist to the channel. This playlist will contain short tutorials covering random PowerShell scripts that I had developed in a lab, not only for practice, um, to resolve some problems that I've seen online that others, maybe Reddit or other users have ran into, just so I have a better understanding. This is not only to document this, but this is also used maybe for those in the future that ever run into any of these problems. They could use this video to help them. With that being said, all of these scripts that I do cover in this playlist will be uploaded into my GitHub, which is listed in the description below. Do not forget to subscribe, uh, not only to support me and my channel, but to also learn alongside me. So with that being said, let's get right to it. All right, so I just wanted to talk about what we are going to cover in this video, starting with the script, then we're going to show how to automate this process within the task scheduler. And then we were going to bring up the documentation to show where you could reference all of this information if you ever needed more. The first thing we're going to look at is going to be the PowerShell script. For those that are not familiar, this is the PowerShell interactive uh, script scripting engine, I believe is what is the ISC, allowing you to write scripts and then execute it within the same window. Uh, so the first line, as you can see here, this is very simple, just two lines. Uh, the first line is going to be defining a variable. You can label this whatever you want. So we're going to label it as inactivity. Uh, then we're going to define a new time span, which is a re requirement, which I'll show you on the next line. And we're going to use days instead of any hours or weeks or anything like that. So we're going to use 90 days. Then on the next one, we are going to use the commandlet search ad account. We're going to define the option of users only. This could be defined as a like computers only, but obviously we only want to disable users that are inactive after not logging in after 90 days which is the next option that we define, which is uh, account inactive, which requires the time span option. And then instead of defining it here in this line, we just went ahead and assigned the variable and placed it here. All right, so now after writing that script, we could go ahead and execute it in this environment right here. So just go ahead and click the uh, run script or press F5. This is going to list all the inactive users that with the 90 days that we had defined earlier. Um, a good thing to point out is in order to disable it, this will not work. We would have to enter or pipe it into another um, commandlet. So just be disable AD account, which you can see right here. But I always suggest that you would run the script before running this disable AD account, because obviously you don't want to disable accounts. Uh, maybe like you typed in the wrong days or something like that you're disabling, maybe uh, an account that you do not want disabled for whatever reason. So just make sure you run the command without that commandlet to verify who you are disabling. And then once you attach that pipe, disable AD account, it will then disable it. All right, just to prove that this script works, obviously, so we added the disable AD account, we piped this information into this commandlet. Uh, just some accounts that we had created previously just to play around with as you can see here the user that we're going to focus on today is right here jack2 uh, as you can see he is enabled at this time because he does not have a down arrow so if we go ahead and execute this script and then you would refresh this screen there you go now you can see that the user is now disabled now that we had verified that the script works Obviously, we do not want to run this manually every day or whatever the requirement is. Instead, we will put this into the task scheduler, allowing us to run it at a predetermined schedule. So to do that very easily, we're just going to open up the task scheduler. I usually just open up run. Uh, it is a little bit slower in the uh, virtual machine, but. All right, so we had open task scheduler then on the left side i had already created it um which i will cover in a second but if you want to create a new one just go ahead create a task and then this is everything that we're going to cover in a second but this is how you would get to this screen so this is the one that i had created um, which we could just double click on so as you can see here obviously we're going to run it only when the user is locked on pretty much everything else is default here this is the name that we had labeled it the triggers, this is something that you want to define. This is saying when you want this script to run. 
I had just a random time at the time when I was testing it. Actions, this is what is going to happen when that trigger um, is triggered, I guess you could say. So we obviously want to run the PowerShell. So you're just gonna put for the action started program and in the program slash script, you're going to find, you could either uh, type the path here or go ahead and find it and browse. And then all you want to do here is add an argument. Pretty much you're going to pass in the file that we had just created. So you just scroll over. You want to get the full path. Uh, and then this is where the disable inactive script that we had just developed is located. So just to prove that um, this is works, I'm just going to go ahead and enable that user again. So now Jack2 is enabled. And then from here, we can just go ahead and test that task by hitting run. Now, if we open up the users, refresh, there you go. The last thing I want to talk about or just bring up is the references. I find the Microsoft references to be amazing. So anytime I'm in the lab, I'm always referring to this just to see the different options, uh, stuff that I can play around with and stuff to refer back to. Also in my notes, I take note of all of this or at least the links so I can reference it in the future. And I suggest you do the same. Uh, but as you can see here, here's the, the, the uh, commandlet that we used, search AD account. And then if you wanted to, you go ahead and um, there's examples down here, but then also if you go down the bottom, you just see the different options and how they are defined. Like for instance here, users only. And on the next one, this was the other commandlet that we had used, the new time span. Again, there's just more options, the description, more examples and stuff that would help you uh, develop your script. All right, so that's gonna close out today's video. I am not sure if I hit that five minute mark that I wanted to, or to stay under at least. Uh, going forward, I at least want to keep them just sweet and simple. At least put the stuff in the beginning because I know that's what most people look out for. They don't ever finish the video. So. In the future, if you ever need any PowerShell scripts, this might be a good reference for you to refer uh, to in the future. I am going to update this over time as I come up with more PowerShell scripts and as I learn the platform more and more, especially going forward now that I'm learning Azure, I am definitely playing with PowerShell a lot more. But with that being said, that's going to close out today's video. As always, never stop learning.